Hey Friday Nights fans, my name is Whitney Sharp and welcome to this week's edition of the Nightly Review on Lynn Sports Network. Your blue and white teams are in the heart of the Sunshine State Conference schedule, so let's see what happened with the Fighting Knights this week. Yesterday afternoon, President Trump took his first steps to combat the opioid crisis in America. Once rivals, President Trump enlisted Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey to head the campaign. In Christie's 20 years of working in government, he has held addiction and treatment at the center of his work. There were highs and there were lows for all of our blue and white squads, so let's show you both. Last Friday, President Donald Trump signed an executive order travel ban where refugees and immigrants from seven predominantly Muslim countries will not be allowed into the United States for three months. Congress not passing a bill from the House is a rarely seen move, but with a vote of 57 to 43 against, in the Senate, the bill never made it. Republicans say that the bill is unconstitutional because it goes against a citizen's right to bear arms, although Democrats counter that it will put Americans at risk for harm. The now Republican majority White House is making aggressive moves to rescind some of the Obama administration's final regulations. Our women's golf team took part in the St. Leo invite where they placed fourth out of 16 teams. It was the second top four finish for the squad in three fall tournaments. Samantha Barber had her most successful day as a member of the Fighting Knights, tying a career best with a 150 total for her first career top five finish. This weekend, the Fighting Knights cross-country team returns to action and will compete in the Disney Cross-Country Invitational. Be on the lookout for this, as well as results from your golf teams, as the men start the year at the NCAA D2 National Preview in Orlando, while the women's squad takes part in the Jacksonville Classic. Barry Cadden, the owner of a Massachusetts compounding pharmacy, was acquitted on Tuesday of 25 counts of second-degree murder after a 2012 scandal that killed 64 people and harmed over 700. Due to unsanitary conditions in his pharmacy lab, Cadden's business sparked a meningitis outbreak as the direct result of trying to produce more drugs by cutting costs in dangerous ways. Victims and the families of those harmed are outraged by the verdict, but there is simply not enough evidence to convict Cadden of the deaths. Cadden was still convicted of racketeering, conspiracy, and other charges, and faces up to 20 years in prison for each count. Earlier in the week, the Fighting Knights fell in a five-set thriller against the Eckhart Tritons, despite an impressive double-double effort from Christina Jorans and setter Marissa Tandron's career-high 65 assists. After splitting the week in the win and loss column, the team is now 9-4 and, and preparing for a weekend road trip in conference play with Tampa and St. Leo. California Representative Maxine Waters is known for being an outspoken woman. That will do it for this week's edition of the Nightly Review. Remember to log on to LynnFightingNights.com for all of your blue and white info. And stay connected by following at Lynn underscore Knights on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching this week and keep winning. For the students affected, their academic future remains unclear. But despite the backlash of the travel ban, President Trump is under the impression that his plan is working out nicely. This has been Whitney Sharp reporting for Lane University iPulse News. And join us back here every Tuesday and Thursday at 1.15 right here on our YouTube page. I'm Kate Britton. And I'm Whitney Sharp and we'll see you Tuesday.